It's kind of hard for everybody. <laughs> it's a somewhat crazy system. Hello and welcome to another one of our Boat How to Ask the Expert series. I'm Jan Attenstedt. And I'm uh, Nigel Calder. And today we have a question. Actually, it's a question from me, because for me as a European, I'm used to uh, the square millimeter of uh, cross-sectional area of wires. But uh, in the US, you have a slightly different system, which is called the AWG uh, gauge system. For me, it's kind of hard to understand, but actually it's not that hard if you know where that actually comes from. So Nigel, what's uh, the origin of, of the system? Well, I'm actually not so sure about that. It's kind of hard for everybody. <laughs> it's a somewhat crazy system. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. But uh, this probably goes back to Roman times, if the truth be told. In order to, uh, to make round wires, people would get a rod of a certain size and then they would pull it through a smaller hole, a die, mm -hmm. which was tapered on the entrance, and they would literally pull it through. It's called drawing wire. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, it was found that you could reduce the diameter of a wire by a certain amount. Mm -hmm. And if you tried to do too much, you broke it when you pulled on it. So to get from a given fairly large rod to a small conductor, you've got to go through multiple dies. Mm -hmm. And so the American wire gauge, uh, number 18 gauge, means we've been through 18 successive dies oh, okay. to get down to that conductor size. Mm -hmm. There were multiple different iterations of this over the years. The British had one, the Americans had a couple of different ones and so on. And they finally, in the States, uh, standardized on a system in the 1850s mm -hmm. that came from a particular company, mm -hmm. which is where the American wire gauge comes from. But the net result is the bigger the number, the more dies the conductor has been pulled through and the smaller the conductor. So it's counterintuitive. Yep. <laughs> so as the numbers go up, the wires get smaller. But then going the other way, when they first started doing this, this was before they had, um, you know, machinery, mm -hmm. the largest conductor they could pull through there mm -hmm. was maybe, you know, the size of my little finger. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was uh, zero. Mm -hmm. And then the next one down is one and two and three mm -hmm. and four. Well, we got to the point where we've got machinery so we can pull much bigger rods through. Mm -hmm. So there's no numbers left. Mm -hmm. So they had to start going up in zeros. So with the American wire gauge, we've got two aught and three aught and four aught. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't go above the four zeros. Mm -hmm. In the British system, they go up to seven zeros. Okay. So basically, a two aught cable is bigger than a one aught cable. Right. Two but, cable. Uh, but a two-gauge cable is smaller than a one-gauge cable. Yes. Yep. And a, <laughs> and a two-aught conductor is about the size of my thumb. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of those on our cruising boats these days. Mm -hmm. They'll carry about 300 amps mm -hmm. with um, reasonably high temperature insulation. Um, but we've got some conductors now that are on boats that are four-aught, which are kind of that size. And then uh, above that, because we do have, like I was dealing recently with a 360 amp alternator circuit installed in an engine room, which is a hot environment, we, we fundamentally we don't have mm -hmm. big enough conductors to handle that, and who would want to install them anyway? Mm -hmm. Well, that's some uh, interesting little excursion in the in the history of uh, wire gauges. Mm -hmm. And if you actually want to know how to size the conductors, well, we have a wire sizer uh, on our Boat How To uh, website. We also talk a lot about that in our Boat Electrics 101 course. So if you want to know how to choose proper conductors for your boat, check that out. And uh, yeah, see you soon.